the first leg of his 40-hour journey to Spokane, Martin negotiates his truck over city streets and through the sprawling metropolis of Los Angeles to reach the famous Ridge Route. Although every company truck is weighed before it leaves the terminal to make sure it's not overloaded, the driver is required to stop for an official weight check by the highway patrol. All trucks must be loaded to meet the varying weight limits of the different states through which they travel. While the freight truck continues northward, Paul Carson's tanker, which left Los Angeles earlier the same day, has reached Arizona. The Arizona run is largely through desert country, but much of the route takes the driver of our tanker through rugged mountain terrain. And driving in the mountains for any truck driver calls for a judicious use of gears and brakes. The powerful air brakes of these trucks in an emergency permit the driver to bring his rig to a halt in the same distance as that prescribed by law for a passenger car. In other than an emergency, however, the driver descends an incline like this in low gear, lightly applying or feathering his brakes. In flat country again, the driver settles down to a steady 45, eating up the desert miles. Nowhere in the world of transportation is there a job quite like this. The steamship captain has his helmsman, the locomotive engineer his fireman, and the airplane pilot his flight engineer. But the truck driver goes it alone. Back in California, Carl nears the end of his ship behind the wheel. At Fresno, on schedule, Martin pulls in at a large truck stop, the company's regular driver relay point. Yes, fill it up, check the water and oil, tires. In little less than eight hours, he has driven some 220 miles. After eight or ten hours rest in driver quarters at the station, he will pilot another truck southbound to Los Angeles. These truck stops generally are of huge proportions, often covering 10 to 20 acres. They offer every conceivable service for the long haul truck, including such personal services for drivers as showers, a message center, and restaurant facilities. Some stations even have a teletype machine to put the driver in direct contact with his home terminal. Because so many of the customers of these truck centers operate on a time schedule, the attendants have become adept at thoroughly checking the big rigs in a remarkably short time. In addition to the usual services of refueling, checking oil and water, and cleaning windows, they inspect all 18 tires and make a round of all the lights on the truck. Within 10 minutes, the truck is ready for the road again. Averaging a little more than five miles per gallon, the truck used 45 gallons of diesel fuel en route to Fresno. Like the gasoline you buy for your personal car, there's a husky tax on diesel fuel, too. Nine cents per gallon in California. It's one of a number of state and local taxes on trucks. Martin's employer pays a tax bill of nearly $7,000 each year for every line rig in the fleet. Hello, George. Hello, Carl. I've got another Spokane load for you. General freight. Truck's running fine. Fine. I'll take off right away. George Foster, on the 300-mile Fresno to Redding run, is typical of the company's 400 scheduled drivers. Constantly traveling over the same route, they know nearly every pebble on the road, the places of potential danger, and even the position of every highway warning sign. Probably no other type of truck operation gives such an advantage in safety as the common carrier driver relay. Out on the highway, 
Alert is the word for the driver. The truck pilot has his own code for the road. It's called defensive driving. Not only does he keep a watchful eye peeled for the usual changing conditions of traffic, but he's constantly looking ahead, anticipating, trying to figure out an emergency before it happens. And that's particularly true in the city, with its congested flow of automobiles and crowds of pedestrians. Then, like any good driver, he must have an awareness of the rights of others and a willingness to share the road. You might call it common courtesy. If getting through city traffic is a chore for the diesel pilot, night driving is no easier. always the problem of reduced visibility after sundown and the chance some driver forgot to turn on his light. Whether he's wheeling his rig over a mountain, through the desert, in the daytime or night, in snow or sleet, the driver's responsibility is to get the freight through.